I'm going to show you how to look up workflow statistics. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Watchers from Vavork. If this is your first time here and you want to learn about automating, programming, and monitoring in VMware environments, you're in the right place. In this video, we're going to see how to look up the statistics for a workflow run. Now, as a quick reminder, what we call workflow runs nowadays used to be called workflow tokens. So throughout this video, whether I say workflow runs or workflow tokens, I mean the same thing. All right, enough talk. Let's do. Let's head on over to the lab environment. As you can see, I've already defined a REST request called Git One Workflow Run Statistics. Now, the idea behind this particular REST request is to get information that Orchestrator is keeping track of each time we run a workflow. For example, it's keeping track of how long is it taking for individual schema elements to run, um, as opposed to how long is it taking the entire um, workflow to run. Now, in order to use this REST request, if you take a look at the endpoint URL, you'll notice that there's a couple of variables that we need to set. We need to set workflow ID and we need to set workflow token ID. If you've watched the previous videos, you know how to do this. So you might want to jump to the next section, but just in case somebody happens to be coming in new, the way I set up the workflow ID environment variable is by going to environments. I go to Vovork and here in my Vovork environment variables, I'm setting workflow name to the workflow that I'm going to run, which is Hello World. I click Save, and then uh, if I go to Collections, I can run Git Workflow ID by Workflow Name. So I send that. That sets up the variable called Workflow underscore ID. And then to actually run the workflow and get its Workflow token ID, I use Run Workflow. Again, it knows the workflow that I want to run from this variable. I click Send, and boom. At that point, what I have set up is uh, it knows the workflow name, it knows the ID of the workflow itself, and crucially here, it knows the ID of the workflow token for this specific workflow run. Now, as you can see, if I go over into Orchestrator and take a look here, but crucially, notice that this workflow run ID ends in 14 echo 4. All right, with that said, Let's go take a look at our new REST request called Git One Workflow Run Statistics, and let's go ahead and run it. When we send that request, we get back a 200, which is good, and we get back various information. Let me resize this here so that we can see all of the info. Now, one of the things that we see here in the activities array is information about the one and only schema element in our workflow. So again, let's take a quick look at the workflow. Well, there's three schema elements, but I'm not counting the start and I'm not counting the end. Uh, if we ignore those, there's only one schema element. And looking here in the graphical user interface, you can see that it took 91 milliseconds to run. Well, if we go look at the information that we have here in the response body, we can see that exact same information. So inside of the activities array for each schema element, you can see uh, the ID of the schema element. Let's take a look at that real quickly here. Again, schema elements have names, but they also have, if you select them, they also have IDs. Uh, there we go. So um, the ID of the in schema element is item two. Let's go look up the workflow, look at its schema, and just to drive the point home, the label for the schema element is say hello, which we don't see in the rest response. But what we do see is its item number, which is item number one. All right, back to our rest request over in Postman. Uh, here's the response body once again. And as you can see, we can also tell things like how many times did this particular schema element run? Right here, we have the workflow token ID. This is the ID of the workflow run, which again, you'll notice here ends in 14 echo 4, which corresponds to what we saw over in the graphical user interface. And we can see other information such as the total amount of time that it took for the workflow to run. Now, if we are in the graphical user interface and we wanted to see that, uh, let's see if we can go backwards here, click backwards. So here in the workflow run at the schema level, we can see information about how long it's taking each schema element to run. But there's more information than just that. In particular, if you go over to the performance tab, there's lots of information here about 
how long it's taking in different ways in this workflow. For example, the total run duration was almost half a second. So that's uh, hours, minutes, seconds, 428 milliseconds is almost half a second in terms of how the user perceived it. On the other hand, uh, in this graph here, you can see it broken down into smaller chunks. For example, how much time uh, did it take from the user's perspective versus how much time was it actually in orchestrator running the workflow? How much time was the orchestrator workflow waiting? How much time was it blocked uh, upon some event? So all this information and more is available here, either through the graphical user interface or through this REST request that we just ran. So again, token block, token system, token user, token weight, correspond to those pieces of information that I just showed you. There's one other section here that uh, my particular example is not showing you, which is that if your orchestrator workflow is making use of a plugin, such as the vCenter plugin, we would get additional information here to see what's going on in terms of the plugin's contribution to the amount of time it's taking to run this workflow. So whether you use the, the post man approach here where we're using a REST request to get this information or you use the graphical user interface, whether you're using REST or you're using the, the GUI, we're providing you information here about how long it's taking for your workflow to run, breaking it down into di different components of the workflow run so you can see exactly where there may be some sort of delay being introduced in your workflow. Now in closing, um, I will freely admit here, I rarely ever look at the performance characteristics of my workflow. I don't do it in the GUI. I don't do it uh, via REST. I know how to do it. I can show you how to do it. We just did. But in general, I am not concerned. At least it's not my primary concern um, when I'm working in Orchestra. It's not my primary concern how fast my workflow is running. I'm more concerned with automating so that I can standardize to make uh, whatever task I'm automating always be performed in the same manner. Just by automating the task by using an orchestrator workflow, it's going to be faster than if a human being was performing the same task. That's the type of speed benefit that I'm generally concerned with. On the other hand, there are those of you out there in the world who are indeed concerned with how long it does take for your workflow to run. So hopefully here, either through the GUI or through this REST response body, you can get the information that you need to identify where your workflows may not be running as fast as they could. Once you know where those areas are, you can go in to look to make them more efficient and decrease the overall amount of time it takes for your workflow to run. Join me in the next video as we continue to explore the Orchestrator REST API.